Hi, and welcome to Let's Get Clinical. Tips from the CRA Helper. Here is your host, Elizabeth Waddell. Hi, Elizabeth here, and welcome to episode two, where we will be discussing time management. By the end of this episode, you will get more of an idea what deliverables a clinical research associate must balance between visits while still being on time. When people first think of a CRA in their career and what their life is like, they first think of, you know, they get to travel to all these cool places for free and they monitor research sites. But other than that, do you really know what their day-to-day activities consist of and what they must balance and multitask? So I definitely learned as a CRA that when I'd go to these places, I didn't really get to venture out as much as I thought I would (laughs) because there's so many deliverables that you want to make sure you get done and you stay on time. And it was funny because people at the airport would pick on me because they're like, you were just a waste going to West Palm Beach, you know, because I, you know, they would ask me if I was going to go, you know, out to the beach. And I'm like, no, I, I'm probably going to head back to the hotel room and get some stuff done, you know, before the next day at the site. And um, it was funny, but it sometimes was nice when I had an ocean view, though, because at least I got to enjoy a little bit of the ocean. But finally, one day I proved it to them. I went out to the beach and they said I had to at least take a picture and prove that I went um, after I was done work. And so I did do that, but guess what? It was of my feet with my laptop on my lap because I still, there was just certain things I wanted to get done that day. So um, definitely you'll find that, you know, there's so much to balance in between visits. And if you want to stay on time, sometimes, um, you know, you want to get things done while you're in the airport or get things done after your visit in the hotel room. You know, being a CRA is definitely a blessing of a career, but it's not a nine to five job. That's for sure. So we've established that a CRA travels and they monitor their assigned sites, but I want to also take a look at the other priorities that may conflict and where a CRA has to get creative and innovative in order to ensure that all the deliverables are met. And again, on time, it's definitely an area, time management is definitely an area that most CRAs can get stuck in or struggle with, including myself earlier in my career. I have totally been there and completely understand. So let's start from the beginning. When you're assigned to a study team, you're going to have your assigned sites and you'll visit them as per the clinical monitoring plan. You're going to hear a lot about this in your career. It's also known as a CMP, and I'll review this document in future episodes, but the point that I want to make now is that you're going to travel to your sites as noted per the schedule outlined in your CMP. So yes, in addition to traveling and monitoring, what else? What else does a CRA have a responsibility to complete and perform? Well, You need to complete pre-visit activities where you contact the site to actually schedule the visit. But, um, and once confirmed, you'll make, you know, travel arrangements and I'll go over tips on that in the future as well, but you'll make your travel arrangements and you're going to complete all the tasks to prepare for the visit. Now there's actually four visit types that a monitor is going to perform and the visit prep for each and each type of visit and the purpose of all of all the visits will be actually reviewed in detail in the January course. But since this episode is dedicated to time management, I don't want to stray too far off from this topic. So I'm just going to call it visit prep for right now. So for um, so visit prep activities must be performed before the visit. But if there's prep, then after the visit, there must be follow up, right? So this consists of the famous trip reports. I'm sure, um, especially you coordinators may have heard this term from CRAs. Um, so trip reports actually document everything observed at the visit, what was monitored, any issues identified, resolution, any re-education performed by the CRA, maybe with the site staff, you know, was anything escalated? Um, if so, who, um, to who and, and when? Um, who was present at the visit, and so much more. It's, it's very detailed. Again, that's a whole other topic, but in a nutshell, a monitor is the eyes and the ears at the site. The trip report should give the reviewer a clear picture of what went on at that visit, what issues were noted, and what's pending resolution. So at most companies, these reports have timelines for the draft and the final version. So here's another important de- deliverable, and it's important it's so important, actually, that it's usually tracked by upper management as well. And I'll touch on metrics in a bit. But in my experience, um, draft trip report submission um, was either at five business days or seven business days. It just depends on um, 
whose SOPs you're following, you know, if it's sponsor SOPs and what do they require, or if you're following zero SOPs and what dates, you know, what deadlines they require. So um, in my experience, drafters reports were either due at five or seven business days. Um, and then um, they were due to be final um, within about 10 or 14 business days. Um, again, depends on the study, depends on the SOPs, um, the actual due dates. Um, but the point is a draft report submitted. It's tracked if that's on time or not. Then the reviewer reviews it, sends it back to the monitor for um, maybe clarification or um, revisions that need to be made. Um, and then it's sent back to the reviewer um, and then uh, it's final. So, and that's usually called like monitor, um, like it's called trip report, TAT or, um, you know, turnaround time. So that's definitely, you know, tracked and it's a very important deliverable. Another follow-up deliverable is your expense report. So this is actually where all the charges for the visit are expensed. So either you or a corporate card is going to actually be reimbursed for all of these charges. So, um, for example, airfare, rental car, cab, Uber fees, meals, hotels, things like that, all things that are reimbursable per your company's travel and expense policies. Um which um, travel and expense policy, that's actually going to be something you're going to review and train on when you start at your company. So these expense reports um, usually have timelines as well. Um, For me, if there was airfare, that was expense prior to the visit. Um, And then all the other charges that were incurred during your visit, that was um, had to be expensed within 10 days. And again, it's going to depend on your company's SOPs and policies at what your due date will actually be. Um, Other items... (sighs) that um, they track, you know, that, um, you know, that could be involved in metrics, maybe not necessarily upper management, but, you know, um, follow-up visit letter, um, the follow-up letter, like when that's sent to the site, um, usually that's uh, sent, you know, when your trip report's finalized and also um, documents, submitting documents to the trial master file. And that's a file kept for the study at the CRO sponsor level. And again, it's going to be in the January course, um, as well as future episodes, we'll talk about that. So I don't want to confuse you on what that is. But that's usually, you know, submitting documents to the trial master file is usually another deliverable. And um, that's actually because they want files, files have to be audit ready at all times. So that's something that we want to um, make sure that we submit all our documents on time as well. So another follow-up item, I'm trying to be as interesting as I can. I know um, that time management is probably not the most interesting topic, but, um, you know, I'm trying. (laughs) But um, another follow-up item is that's tracked is submission of timesheets. And you may wonder, okay, it's one thing if I'm hourly, but why would I complete a timesheet if I'm a salary employee? Which is a great question because I actually wondered that myself when I first started. I'm like, I am getting a salary, right? Like, why am I doing a timesheet? But um, now I've never worked on the pharma side, but as a CRO, a contract research organization, we're contracted by a pharmaceutical company or sponsor to perform one or more of a sponsor's trial-related duties and functions. So because we're contracted, we're a CRO, we need to know how much time is actually spent on the study related task in order to know how much to bill the sponsor. So, so I get it. So once it was kind of explained to me and I, you know, I was like, Oh, okay, I get it now. So they need to know a, how much time is spent on the task in order to know how much to bill the sponsor. Um, and some series, they may be on two studies with two totally different sponsors. So that would need to be really detailed what tasks were performed, how long, and for which study. So it's very important, um, and it really is easier to actually complete these as you go in whatever system your company uses, because as you can see, these can be pretty pretty detailed, you know, pretty um, lengthy, especially if you have multiple studies and multiple tasks that you perform that week. So it, it's nice and more accurate um, if you do it on a daily basis. You want to make sure to just keep record and know exactly, because you want to be very – accurate on how long it's taking you to complete, you know, each task of your study. Um, so I went down that rabbit hole on, on timesheet completion. But um, so also another thing that timesheets can tell is um, the time spent on the study re- related task. Usually, um, 
when you start in a study, you know, the clinical monitoring plan is going to list, um, you know, how many hours are budgeted for, you know, the, the monitoring visits and travel and things like that. But also at the beginning of your study, you may get some sort of sheet or it may be in the CMP, um, but it's like a time per task that was budgeted for your study. So they may have, um, you know, the amount of hours that they've budgeted for, um, you know, spent on trip report completion, um, preparation for monitoring visits, follow up, things like that. So another thing that's nice is um, when you when, you know, a reviewer is looking at these timesheets is to know, okay, are there any trends? You know, is it am I seeing that the the team as a whole is taking longer on tasks that we originally budgeted for? Because maybe the contract will require an update. So um, that's something also helpful. But timesheets must be completed on time. Um, it's nice to have them by like end of business on Friday, of course, especially as a manager, you know, yay, my team got them in. But some some companies may give actually until midnight on Saturday or Sunday, depending on the company. But it really is always best practice to have it completed and submitted by Friday. Um, because at companies, upper management may, may run reports on Mondays, and you just don't want your name to show up on a delinquent list with management. I know I wouldn't. If my name's going to show up, I want it to be like, woo, this girl did an amazing job um, at the site visit, and or, or there was an audit, and there were like no findings. So I would want my name showing up for that, you know. So um, definitely want to be on time. Just put a reminder in your calendar. You can do it. You can do it. And again, if you keep up with it through, you know, during the week, then all you do is put Friday's time in and there you go. So another item that's tracked and and it is very, very important is training compliance, right? You know, we always want to make sure that we're tracking training and making sure a site's compliant with their training. Well, guess what? We have to have training. We need to be compliant too. So usually companies have what's called um, a learning management system, also known as LMS, just depending on the vendor or type of, you know, each company may use a different type system. Um, it just depends on the vendor. But again, it's it's a learning management system. So of course, when you start a company, you're you're going to um, complete like all the required training, which is usually a huge list when you started a company because you have to do all the company wide training. And of course, when you're assigned to a study, you're going to do your study specific training. But um, as you're at a company and say, you know, there's an update to an SOP or maybe even a new one, it's going to be loaded into the LMS system and it's going to have an expiration date. So that's something as a monitor you want to keep track of like, ooh, how many trainings do I have? I mean, and you might think you're down to zero and then you go in that LMS system and you have a big fat 10 with a circle around it. And you're like, what? There's 10 new SOPs? And, you know, then you'll look at the expiration date and then I would like sort by the earliest date, like what's due next and put a reminder that, hey, I've got to get this done because you do not want to be late with training um, and you want to ensure that it's completed on time. So you've heard me multiple times throughout this episode say on time and track my upper management and you may think okay here we go the big m word metrics also known as micromanagement you think that right but in actuality it really isn't once you know why each deliverable is so important it kind of helps you understand why the timelines are so important so it's not really micromanaging it's the fact that we all have obligations to meet and we want to show um we want to show compliance so let's start with trip reports for example So why is the draft, the turnaround time, and the finalization tracked? Well, the first obligation that we have as monitors is subject safety and data integrity. So it's important that the observations, the issues, the resolution, the re-education, they're promptly documented. So also, in addition, as a CRO, remember, we're contracted. Included in that contract is time and budget. And submission of trip reports is one of them. So if we're not meeting timelines that were agreed upon between the CRO and the sponsor, we're, then we're not meeting our contractual obligations. So if I were upper management, I would want to know if we're not meeting our clients' needs as well as regulatory requirements. So, you know, it's very important, you know, very important to have that done. And next is training compliance. Okay. First, training is huge with the FDA, so we want to make sure, yes, we're compliant with training. And also per ICHDCPs, it's right there, black and white, monit- that states that monitors should be appropriately trained, should have the scientific and or clinical knowledge needed to monitor the trial adequately. So if we're not compliant with training, then we're not abiding by these regulations. And what if there was an FDA audit and they were like, hey, can you run me a, a training report? And they run those training compliance reports. Would you want your name showing up as not compliant? No, I wouldn't. So again, another important reason why we want to stay on top of it. 
and expense reports. It's important to have timelines for this because you don't want to incur late fees on your corporate cards. You don't want to have your card frozen, which would affect your upcoming travel. And usually this, usually these late fees and, you know, late fees, they're not reimbursable for an employee anyway. And then you'll have to pay that out of pocket. So um, definitely want to have those in on time for sure. And I already touched on the reason for on-time submissions of timesheets as at most companies, upper management is going to use this as a tool for budgets and items that they need to track. So we need to ensure it's available to them when they need it. And other things that are important to complete on time, you may have heard about um, scheduling travel. For example, some companies require travel scheduled within two weeks of the visit. Because airfare, you may know this from personal travel, as it gets closer to the time of departure, airfare just totally gets more expensive. So we definitely want to schedule travel depending on your company, but most of the norm that I've um, experienced is within about two weeks, 14 days of the time of departure. And some CRAs, you know, kind of have, um, they have their heart in the right place and they're like, oh, well, I'll schedule like a month out. It'll be real, you know, cheap. But the only thing that's scary about doing that is um, visits can change. They can be canceled. They can be postponed. So, and if that happens and you have to reschedule, then you're incurring charges for difference in airfare and exchange fees. So that's why usually about 14 days out, two weeks, you know, prior to the visit, you pretty much know it's going to happen. So that's usually why that's the norm. But again, it depends on your company. Um. And so you see from all of this, there's a lot that a CRA balances between visits. And it doesn't even include things like email communications with the study team and the sites, um, issues to follow up on, routine contacts with the sites as specified in the clinical monitoring plan. So there's a lot to balance, but with the right plan and, and, and you know, just you, you get in your groove as you start, as you become a CRA and just with that right plan and, and, um, and I have tips, you know, regarding time management. With that, you can do this. You can balance it. You know, sometimes there's a change in priorities. Once maybe a new issue comes up, you're like, whoop, got to switch that around. Um, and you may have to change it a bit. But um, you definitely um, you definitely can do it. Calendar and phone reminders were definitely my best friend. Working at baggage claim to finish up a draft report um, just to make sure it was on time. Sometimes, you know, I had to do that. But you do what you have to do to get the job done. And it's it's such a great feeling too. And, you know, again, I'm going to discuss tips to succeed in time management and the January course. And But I, I really wanted to go ahead and dive into this because it is an area that can be a struggle for CRAs. And I remember for me, I'll share my story. Earlier in my career, I was a CRA traveling constantly. Um, I was barely in the office. And at that time, this is how long ago it was, when completing expense reports, we actually had to tape our receipts Um, on paper and scan them in. Um, And so I needed to be in the office to do that. That was something I couldn't do, you know, on the road or at the hotel. So I was traveling so much and, you know, trip reports are my priority. I was barely in the office. And so I got behind on my expense reports. My card ended up being frozen, not to mention the late fees I had to pay. But thank the Lord, my manager was amazing. And because of him, Um, He helped me where it didn't affect my upcoming travel. And once I caught up, my corporate card was up and running again. Um, But did you know, this ended up being a blessing. Did you know that I never was late with expense reports from then on? And I was able to work out a time management plan that helped me to keep all my deliverables within compliance. And tips with time management will also help you with annual performance reviews, as these metrics are also measured on the performance reviews as well. So back when that happened earlier in my career with expense reports, it actually, it affected my performance review. Even though my manager said I was a star performer, I was a great monitor, he couldn't give me a meets expectations because of the expense report issue. And it killed him. He was like, Elizabeth, you're a star performer. I am so sorry, but on paper, I have to answer the question, you know, based on my expense report, you know, completion. And I completely understood, even though it crushed me because I was a perfectionist and I just had gotten overwhelmed with traveling. And lucky for you guys now that is in regards to expense reports, there are so many new systems and te- technologies out now that um, actually by the time I stopped monitoring, um, some companies use what's called Concur and there's actually an app and you can take pictures of your receipts and it uploads and you can pretty much get the most of your expense report done 
on your phone and finish up on your computer on the road. So it's definitely things with technology have made things easier for sure. But, um, but again, so, but my story ended, you know, with a happy ending because um, from then on, you know, I still got a great review per my manager. Um, but you know, that day, but, um, you know, I just couldn't have a meet expectations because of the expense report issue, but moving forward, I just, it helped me to develop a time management plan that worked for me. I was on time, um, with deliverables and every performance review moving forward, I got either meet, you know, meet expectations. Um, I got, um, above expectations or exceed expectations on some things. So, um, it definitely, you know, I definitely grew moving forward and, I just want to help you guys um, come up with the best ways and best tips in succeeding in time management. So um, because performance reviews also can affect your annual merit increase, if that's something that your company has, um, it can affect bonuses. And again, I want you to succeed. So I definitely want to dive deep into this in the course. Um, And remember that when your managers, I've been on the other side too, and I want you to remember that when your managers are following up on the status of something, they're helping you to make sure you stay in compliance. Um, You know, I would rather for me to have too many reminders than something falling through the cracks and it not getting done. So just wanted to give you that little tip. Um, But I cannot believe that the time is up. Um, Are you still there? (laughs) I know it was a lot that we covered um, in this short time, and it's not the most interesting material, but it definitely can help you for sure in your career. I really hope you guys have a great day, and I will talk to you soon. Until next time.